Welcome to episode 700, guys. Buckle up. How's everyone doing tonight? Hopefully you guys are in the mood for a bit of dwarf fortressing. Um, this, of course, is the 700th episode of the 1001 game series. Um, hard to believe we've made it this far, but uh, also, I don't know, not that hard to believe. I, I, I've i enjoyed this whole journey. So um, now today, I don't know if you guys know about Dwarf Fortress, but it is considered one of the most complex video games of all time. Um, not just in terms of controls, but in terms of game complexity. It, uh, it literally, it, it's a fascinating game, and you guys, we'll, we'll hop into it um, in a minute here. I, I did do a little bit of research. Uh, I, I looked at a couple different tutorials and stuff, just for getting started, so that I didn't want to just start the game and just be like, oh, uh, what do I do? So I have a little bit of an idea on how to start, but I don't know any advanced features. So if you guys know this game and you want to, you know, shout out in the comments something for me to try, I will try and give it a uh, give it a shot. So um, <laughs> Mr. Mountain Hiker says, "Jump in blind, dude! You have no idea how complex this game is. It's it's crazy." Um, so for people who don't know, it's like basically a world simulator, almost like The Sims, only set in medieval times with dwarves and it has a bunch of different game modes. It was actually the inspiration of Minecraft. And one of the game modes is called Adventure, which we won't play today, but I was just reading about the Adventure mode. And it's basically like a roguelike game. You go and you adventure in these worlds. And it has such sophisticated, uh, you know, tables of damage. Like it, 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 it tracks bruising on fat and like punctures to vital organs and stuff. And enemies don't have hit points. They simply die when their vital organs have been damaged. So super fascinating game. Um, I feel like I've talked about it enough. Let's actually hop in here. So bear with me for a second while I get it going. Um, but also I'm excited that you guys have actually showed up to uh, ring in. Uh, this is beginning of year eight for us. So year seven is coming to a close. We're on our 700th game. Um, and that, of course brings us to so let's see here we go so dwarf fortress is entirely in ascii at least the original og was there are add-ons you can get that uh, give it graphics but you guys know me i'm uh i i'm a sucker for the original ascii um and sort of og graphics like i, I love this little movie we got going on there that was cool this game, you might look at the graphics and think, oh, this, this came from like the 80s. It actually started development in 2002, and they had like an alpha version they released four years later. So it took four years just to get to the alpha version. They're still developing this game. This isn't version one. This is version 0 0.47, meaning they're about halfway done. Halfway done developing this game. And you will see, it is insanely complex, so... Um, you know, these guys are on their own 20 year journey. I mean, these guys are on a 40 year journey. Uh, there's just a totally different, uh, level of, of work than what we're doing anyway. Okay. So, um, slaves of Armok, God of blood chapter two, colon dwarf fortress. That sounds like the title of like some elaborate Sylvester Stallone movie or something. Okay. To start dwarf fortress, we got to create a world. And so what happens here is that the game is going to procedurally generate a world for us out of nothing. And it will have its own history and peoples, cities, castles, mythologies, everything. Um, so as there have been, uh, there's been some time between releases and stability is to be expected. Here, I'm, I'm going to try something a little different today. I want to see what would happen if we have the chat up while I play. So... We'll see if the chat interferes. If it does, we might hide it, but it's kind of might be fun for you guys to see what people are saying as we uh, actually play. Anyway, um, here are the world options and let me adjust the chat size here. Um, let me do it like this. Make my screen a little smaller and I'll kind of leave the chat there. I don't know if the chat is super visible for you guys, but uh, anyway. 
Um, Andy says, congrats on hitting the 700 milestone. Thank you, Andy. Um, it is, uh, yeah, quite an achievement. Um, and I'm, I'm happy we made it. Anyway, so here's all the world details. I'm just going to leave everything as default and say go. And now you can see the game is literally generating. And it's making civilizations. Years are passing. Wars are being fought. Uh, damsels are being wooed. I don't know what happens in medieval times. Um, I should also mention that in the spirit of Dwarf Fortress, dwarfs are, are, are known for enjoying their mead and their grog. And uh, I'm having a few beers tonight. So uh, I'm on my first... Um, but I thought, you know, 700th episode, we should let loose a bit. And also dwarves like to drink, so we're going to partake as well. Um, so this this generating of the world is going to take a little while. So um, we have some time to sort of sit back and relax. And I guess I have time to drink beer. And I think this is going to go up to... 200 or so so obviously as the world gets more complex as more time has passed it takes longer uh, to pass the years but hopefully this doesn't take more than a couple minutes here um in the chat mr mountain hiker is saying what's everyone's least favorite game you've played and i know that's a question not necessarily directed at me it's kind of posted at everyone but while we're waiting um maybe i'll weigh in on some of these things uh so i mean yeah i am curious to hear what your guys least favorite games you've played you know in your life are um but ones that i know that uh have been least favorable for me in the thousand one quest you guys remember dragon slayer it was uh it's a very iconic game and i think it's a very cool game actually but it sucks <laughs> <laughs> it's basically just a series of quick time events and they're all uh they're all just really brutal and there's no real gameplay it's just a memorization game and um it's it's like very randomized it looks cool and it, it reminds me of arcades in the 80s and so i, I kind of do love it for its nostalgia value but when i actually played it i the game sucked I, i'll never go back and play that one again it's fun to look at and if somebody is good at it, it'd be cool to watch them play. But to actually play yourself is, is not a good game. Um, it was more of like a, uh, a technology demonstration of Laserdisc technology back in the days. And um, for what it was, it was pretty cool. But it's almost more of like a tech demo than like a, an enjoyable game, I would say. Um, <laughs> Mr. Mountain Hiker is saying every Atari game ever made. Uh... There are a couple of good Atari games out there, but I will say that, uh, yeah, Atari is a rough patch in, in gaming history. I, you know, it, it all depends on what you grew up with, I think, because there are some people who would, who would consider it heresy to say anything negative about the Atari, because they grew up with the Atari, and it was like their, uh, their beloved games of their youth. Um, and, you know, that I, I think whatever you grow up with, in some ways, you will always cherish, even as you age. Um, and I, I did have Atari as a, when I was a kid. I was really little though. I must have been like six or seven. I remember playing my dad's Atari, um, and I liked it. I, I loved video games even back then, but it was really like Mario Brothers 1 that blew me away, and Nintendo became like the thing I loved as a kid. So Atari was a little rougher. Um, but you know, like you can't discount those old games. Um, I think a few years back, uh, I had Jordan on the channel. We played Utopia, and that was on the Intellivision, which I think is even—is that a predecessor to Atari, or is it slightly after? They're—they're they're very close in time when they came out. And even for being such a very simple game, it was loads of fun. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it—it—it it, it all depends. I think. Um, boy, it feels like we really are waiting on history here. I hope some orcs come and slaughter everyone so we can get a... So the population decreases and the years start passing by more quickly. Um. Oh, Matt says... Matt's correcting me. It's not Dragon's Quest, it's Dragon's Lair. You're totally right. 
Yeah, yeah, Dragon's Quest was an NES game, and that one actually is good. <laughs> oh, somebody else said the Tiger Electronic Games. Oh, man. Can we, do we even consider those games, or are they just, like, the functional equivalent of uh, an app on a Casio watch? Like, those things... Although, again, like, you know, we I did a special episode where I played a bunch of Tiger Electronic Games, and there was one or two that actually did surprise me. Um, there was one that was sort of like a gauntlet style maze from a third person perspective. And for what it was, I was actually impressed and, um, yeah, it was kind of cool, but you know, obviously I feel like in the eighties and nineties games were not as easy to get as for kids. Like nowadays, you know, a kid that grows up nowadays has access to every single emulated game system from the PlayStation one or even PlayStation two and earlier, since the day they are born, they can play it on everything, anywhere, at any time, you know? Like, there's such a vast library of games. When we were growing up, it was like, games were hard to get, man. And, like, you know, when you're addicted to video games, it's like if somebody offered you the shittiest game ever on a Tiger... You, you would play it in a second, right? And you would be grateful to play it. It's like we were just junkies desperate for games. We'd play anything. Um, so Tiger, like, filled... Uh, filled a niche that existed but I don't if you release something like Tiger today it would 100% bomb because like nobody's going to waste their time on it um, they were a waste of money they were a hawk bird tree they were <sighs> the third age of myth creating new region one rejected I wonder what that means um, all the dwarves in this are going to have really crazy names, by the way. So if you see at the very top, it says Snospedastrasp. Yeah, I mean, maybe if you're Swedish, that just rolls off the tongue. But for someone like me who barely speaks English, that is a difficult word. Um, the map just changed, though. I wonder if there's a giant flood. The Elven Forest Retreat of Nilarathe. Nilarath? Nilareth? The Forest of Dignity. So when this world eventually does spawn, um, <laughs> uh, Hawkbird Tree saying in here, let me make the chat bigger while we're waiting. Why not? There you go. Um, yeah, saying shareware makes me feel old. Me too, my friend. Me too. Nobody says shareware anymore. It's it's weird. Like, shareware was just basically just demos, right? Like, I, well, I mean, I guess it was a specific kind of demo. They would give you part of a complete game and ask you to buy the rest of it. And the game was designed to be parceled up into, like, thirds or quarters. Um, whereas, like, a demo these days is just uh, a couple levels of a game and it's not meant to be like a complete experience in and of itself and it may or may not be indicative of the final pro uh pro project uh oh the beer's hitting me um final product guys i couldn't think of the word product uh yeah so i guess i don't really do shareware anymore I mean, they do freeware. This game is freeware, by the way. Um, if you are interested after today, if this game ever loads, we're going to get to, two, I think it's year 250 it actually loads us in. So we're getting there, guys. It hasn't stalled out. Um, you do need a beast of a computer. You need a quad core 32 gigs RAM to generate your ASCII world here. Um, if you have a, you know, uh, eight terabyte GPU in your computer, that will help. Certainly you want an SSD because once you get into the third age, you don't want to be waiting all night. Right. So you, th basically this game needs like a gaming rig. If you want to play, um, don't be fooled by the ASCII. Um, but, uh, yeah, shareware, shareware makes me feel old. Um, I remember so many good shareware games too. Doom, Cannon Fodder, um, Jazz Jackrabbit. I feel like as a kid, uh, I lived off of shareware. Like they were, truthfully, most of the games I played growing up on PC were shareware games. There's very few I actually bought. 
And uh, me and, like, a friend would have to, like, chip all our money together and, like, buy a game together and then, like, jointly own a game and decide whose house the box stays at. And then, like, I always had the bad computer. I was the kid who never had a good computer. So even if I paid more and bought the game, I'd have to take the disc over to my friend's house and install and play it there and stuff. So, um, yeah. Third Age of Myth. So what's everybody's favorite retro game? While we're while we're continuing to wait here, we've talked about terrible games. I guess we just talked about one. I don't know if anybody else weighed in. World of Warcraft is my choice. Worst game ever. I prepaid for a year of service for when Legion came out. Um what genre? Well, I don't know, just favorite favorite retro game. You, you could have like a favorite or two. Um, I mean, I certainly have a handful of favorites, so yeah, I'd probably qualify that. It's hard to pick an absolute favorite game, because there's so many good ones. But, uh, World of Warcraft's an interesting choice for worst game. I feel like a lot of people love that thing. People get, like, addicted to that and lose their jobs and stuff. There's actually a good documentary. It's years old now. It's called, uh... Is it Second Skin? I think it's called Second Skin. And it's about people who get addicted to these online games. There's there's one documentary about people who get addicted to WoW and um, EverQuest. And then there's another one about people who are addicted to Second Life. I think the Second Life is called Life 2.0. And then the one, the one about WoW is called sec, uh, Second Skin. Yeah, but it's good. It's just people who like play video games 16 hours a day and are totally addicted. Um, Second Life is the game, is the actual like online um, game service that exists where people just go and be social and have sex with each other and stuff. And like, I'm not joking. They literally do. Like that is, if you watch Life 2.0, um, there's a couple that meet on Second Life and they get busy in Second Life, and then they fly and meet each other and do it in real life. So there you go. Uh, come to come to Gaming J's yearly streams for all the dirtiest documentaries out there. Um, but yeah, Second Skin is the name of the documentary. That's about WoW and EverQuest, and it's a good one. Yeah. Oh. We have some action. All right. So here we are. We are in Snod Strasp. The past planets has been created. So what we need to do now, I think, is we need to find a place to set up. Um, the elven forest of Redalthia. So from what I've read, we kind of want to be in some kind of like temperate jungle area and you kind of have to use your imagination a bit guys so it's like these gray areas are mountains uh the yellow is desert i think these might be grasslands hills of wondering what are these the occult desert oh we probably want to stay away from that um hey crescent hawks inception is somebody's favorite that's awesome dude I feel like that was a game that, I, I mean, I've talked about it many, many times about how much I love Battletech and I love those old DOS games and stuff. But I feel like, you know, when I would go to school and tell people or like talk about games, nobody knew Crescent Hawks Inception or Revenge, even though like they were my favorites. It's kind of cool that there are other people who would rank them as like their favorites. Yeah, these are jungles. We don't want a jungle. We want, where are all the forests at, yo? Oh, maybe it's these uh, clubs. Stoked jungles. The Dune of Mothers. Sounds very Game of, Game of Thronesy. The Gear Desert. That's interesting. Um, and maybe we should just pick something here. Oh, look at this. Monastery of Tambing Cafe. 
There's monasteries and stuff there. Oh, purple apparently is bad. It's like uh, where there's like evil people. Um, let's see what we got going on over here. I think I just have to pick a place at a certain point. The mechanical field. I could be on an island. I could be an island dweller. The creative for okay, this this seems okay. The hills of it. Oh no, but there is uh dark goblin pits. Okay, hold on. We're gonna go across the water. This seems a little better. The uh dunes of recreation <laughs> and the respectful jungle. Done. And the celebrated forest. This sounds like a lovely area. Celebrated forest, dunes of recreation, uh respectful jungle. We will accept. Offloading units. Yeah, I don't know what that means, but something's happening. Oh, I think we were just inspecting the world. I thought we were picking a starting point, but I think that comes in a minute. Dwarf Fortress, the game of epic load screens, the likes of which the world has never seen. What else are people talking about here? Oh, Worms. Worms is a great game. Worms is one of those games you have to play multiplayer, though. Like, if you play it solo, it's not nearly as fun. Um, I think I saw, yeah, Bomberman was in here. What else are people talking about here? Saturn Bomberman. Very keen to see what they do with the uh, Steam release of Dwarf Fortress. Yeah, so Dwarf Fortress, interestingly enough, this is the freeware ASCII version. I think there's a version on Steam, and I'm pretty sure it's free, too. You can correct me. If I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure it is free, um, but it has like nicer graphics. So it's like if the ASCII is too primitive for you and you need graphics, then you can go for um, the Steam release. You can also, I believe, load in custom graphics if you want. But uh, <laughs> anyway, um, our world is loading up. We're going to load onto the 15th day of the month of granite. We have granite, slate, felsite, then hematite. Malachite. Okay, we didn't get to read it all. That's okay. All right. So now we get to select a starting point. So um, let me adjust the chat here a little. Oop, shrink you guys down. And I'm going to adjust. This a bit. I'll just bring you guys back up. There we go. Okay, so we need to find that area that we found that I liked. The celebrated forest it was over here somewhere. Here it is. Okay, so here's what we're doing right now. In the middle, we have sort of our um, a region view. To the right, our world view. And to the left is our local view. Um, so these are like three different zoom levels of the game. And we need to uh, basically uh, pick a, a starting place, but... We do not want an aquifer. Aquifer means that there is water just below the soil, and that is going to be bad for us. So it turns out that we do not want to be anywhere near this the pleasant jungle or whatever the hell it was called. We need to find somewhere else. Shallow metals. It's light aquifer. Okay, we're just going to keep looking around for an area. Does not have water in the ground. There's water in the ground everywhere. Huh. All right, well, I'm going to broaden our horizons then. We're just going to look for any area. We also want to find an area that is temperate, that has trees. You guys continue to chat amongst yourselves while I, uh, I work on this. Temperate. Okay, so this has, yeah, there's no aquifer here, which is good, but we need it to be tempered. We don't need it, but I was advised by the tutorials that uh, you want temperate because you want to have different seasons. You want to have like summer and winter and stuff. Damn, this would have been perfect. <laughs> it would be an island for island dwellers. Ooh. Um, 
Aquifer. Okay, hold on. This this looks promising. The shrub, the temperate shrubland. Uh, there's woodland around us, moderate vegetation, calm surroundings, very deep soil, shallow metals, and deep metals. I think we are going to create Paradise Island. Although, hold on. Okay, so that is one location. Just out of curiosity. Because it would be nice to be on the mainland. Um... This aquifer is so annoying. It's like literally everywhere. Okay, we're gonna go. We're we're going island. We're going the island. And the nice thing about being island dwellers, we can basically name it whatever we want. Okay, so there's like the one place without an aquifer. Like this one little region. Building on clay. Okay, hopefully we can uh, build uh, farms and stuff. All right, I will select this. Um. Hold on, how do I E to embark? Okay, play now! Forget about it. I like how you have two options. You can prepare uh, carefully or just jump in. You have arrived! Um, after a journey from Mount Holmes into the forbidden wilderness beyond, your harsh trek has finally ended. Your party of seven is to make an outpost for the glory of all Occam Tome. God, they, why, why the crazy names? Just putting me through my paces. There are almost no supplies left. This is sort of like the end of Oregon Trail. It's like Oregon Dwarf. It's like the dwarfs made this great journey, and now they're here, and now you got to do the next step, which is survive. Um, but with stout labor comes sustenance. Whether by bolt, plow, or hook, provide you for your dwarves. You are expecting a supply caravan just before winter entombs you. But it is spring now, enough time to delve, uh, secure lodgings ere the dingoes get hungry. A new chapter of Dwarven history begins here at the p place. Rigathrod, Todd. Uh, Craft Dash. Break the Earth. Is that my guy's name or is that a place? Or is that an object? I have no idea. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to adjust this here a little bit. Um, so this is the world of Dwarf Fortress. Um, again, you can see it's all uh, sort of ASCII based. Um, the little you know, faces here, these are my dwarf dudes. This is our like caravan. And um, let's see, so here's some water and stuff. So you know what I realized? We are not even near a hill. So I don't even know how we're gonna dig. I guess we're just going to I guess we're just going to be surface dwellers, which is weird for a dwarf. Um, how do we dig down? Make burrows, maybe? Let's see. So here are all your options. Buildings, civilization, designations. So, let's see. If you designate, we can... I think we can designate them to dig down. So maybe we'll just start that. So this is one thing that tutorials didn't cover. In every tutorial I watch, there's a mountain to dig into. So guys, if you know what I'm supposed to do here to dig down, let me know. But I think what we want to do is, uh, let's see, remove stairs. Let's try digging down. So let's see if we can, Dig down there. There you go, dwarves. Do some digging. Um, and let's just see what happens. Ah, they are actually digging their way down. Okay, so the interesting thing about Dwarf Fortress is that one way to think about it is it's basically Minecraft, right? But it's from a top-down perspective and you're more like controlling a group of people. But you have to chop lumber, you have to mine, you have to craft, you have to do everything in Minecraft. And you're kind of looking uh, at one layer. And if I press uh, the uh, sort of greater than sign, uh, we can look down. And this is now looking down into the earth. And we can go another layer down. And now we're just looking at dirt. We can also zoom back up to our layer. We can go even go higher. So these O's here are actually tree trunks. And if we go higher, these are the tree trunks with like leaves and stuff. And you can go higher and higher you can see the tops of the trees. 
So it's basically like Minecraft, but looking down on it and it's two-dimensional. Now, okay, I think that now that we are have dug down, we can actually designate some digging. Um, oh, and there's I think there's water over here. Interesting. Uh, this is not a game about winning. This is about how long you can survive. Ain't it the truth, man? Um, let's see. Does that work? I don't think that works. No, we cannot mine here. All right, well, if you know how to mine down, let me know. But let's... We can zoom up here. We can focus on designating... We can chop down some trees. I'm basically going to have the dwarves clear cut this entire area here. So, boom. Do it, dwarves. Um, escape is done. Space to resume. All right, the dwarves are getting busy with their manual labor. I'm just going to sit back here and have more of my grog. Grog or mead? Or ale? I don't know. What's the old timey word for beer? And when did they start calling it beer? Why did they give up on the old names and go with, uh, you know, raw or beer? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I've had too many beers. I don't know what I'm saying. Actually, I'm still on my first. Um, all right, my dwarves have chopped down a fair amount here. I'm going to designate a wood pile over here. Um, oh wait, I want to pile for wood, and then we'll designate it over here, there. Now the dwarves are going to not just chop down the trees, but they will also pile up all the wood in a nice orderly fashion, then we can start building things. But yes, if anyone knows how to dig down, let me know. Otherwise, we're going to be surface dwellers today. There might be a way to have them relocate onto a different... Oh, what is this over here? This is a turkey gobbler. Two turkey gobblers are standing at the edge of our camp, staring menacingly at us. Those turkeys, they, uh, they mean business, man. We're going to have to take them down, I think. We also have some nice gentle music in the background. I like that. Oh, I'm paused. There we go. Resume. I'm like, why are my dwarves not doing anything? There we go. Work! I need, uh... I think back when we played... What was it? Age of Mythology or something? Not Age of Mythology. Age of Empires. Um, I think we used to keep a, uh, a mounted horsemen near all the peasants to whip them to make them work faster. I don't think that mechanic's actually in the game, but mentally that's what was happening for me. We need a mounted horseman to whip all my dwarves to make them work harder, I think. Uh, the designations menu shows all the mining tools you need, such as stairs up. Uh, D, then you, stairs down. Oh, we need stairs. Okay, thanks for the tip, man. Uh, we're gonna give this a shot. Stairs down down and we're gonna try and do like that do it done I don't know if they're gonna do that or not you want to channel D then H as that creates downward facing ramp onto your current Z level okay we're getting into advanced stuff I never planned on this we're gonna channel. We're gonna give it a shot. See, this is why I decided to do this one live stream because, uh, you know, already you guys can see the benefits of it. All right, while those guys, ooh, they are channeling. Oh, perfect. You sweet, smart bastards. Yeah, I, th I think it's working. I don't know, we'll, we'll figure it out. Um, I'm gonna start building, let's see. I know we need a workshop of some kind, workshop. 
And then we want a carpenter's workshop that will allow us to build things. So let's set up a little dwarf village over here. The carpenter wants to be near the wood pile. So there you are, sir. Place. And knock yourself out. Use the apple wood logs, why don't you? Build a nice apple wood log place. Um, all right, if we go down. Hey, look! We have actually built a way down. It worked! Okay, we can now actually start digging into this. Or do we want to go further down? I don't know. Um, okay, designation. We want to mine. Let's see if this can actually work. Oh, yeah. Okay, we'll create a... So this will be like a main... I don't know, entryway or whatever. And then the dwarves will come down and they will go to various parties and stuff down here. All right, resume. See, now this dwarf, he's carving out a little uh, hallway for us so we can create an awesome... I think the first thing we're going to make is a bar. So, in fact, actually, we should come up here and we need to build a still, I guess. Um, let's see. I like how we haven't even made beds yet and we're making a bar. The dwarves have priorities, man. Uh, workshops... Still. Oh, you know, we're all, we're also going to need a farm. Because uh, you can't make alcohol out of nothing. As awesome as that would be. Good evening, Blitzwing. <laughs> Blitzwing. Jeez, sorry. Uh, welcome to the party, man. Um, all right. Designate. We need some far. Oh, you know what? Okay, we're going to build our farm underground. So here's one thing that I learned about dwarves, is they like to eat plump helmets. And I know that sounds for like a euphemism, but get your minds out of the gutter for a second. Plump helmets means uh, mushrooms. So this is what they like to eat. This is just what I've heard. This is what I've heard. So we're going to make some farm, uh, farm area uh, over here. A nice big... Farm area full of plump helmets for the dwarves to imbibe. There we go. This really does feel a little bit like uh, playing like The Sims or SimCity, sort of. It's not quite like SimCity's a little different, but it is similar where you just sort of, um, uh, you know, throw up zones and then sort of the citizens take care of it. It takes care of it all. Like in a game like StarCraft or Command and Conquer, like you have to like literally build uh, every individual building. But in a game like uh, SimCity, you just designate an area as residential, and then, I don't know, the individual citizens figure out uh, what they actually want to do. But, uh, uh, Hawkbird Tree says, I thought you made beer from the plump helmet. Um, yes, you you can make beer from the plump helmet, too. It's, it's food for them and also beer. Um, so, you know what? I wonder, the plump helmet might not even grow <laughs> underground. I might have just carved out this big giant room for nothing. Put this dwarf through manual labor for absolutely no reason. Uh, because look at the ground. It's all like, uh, like what is the ground here? Sand. Do mushrooms grow in sand? I guess we will find out. Um, all right. Let's see. I think it's designation. No. Okay, where's farmland? Build. Farm plots right down here. Okay, we can build it here. So let's see. We can make it. You want to make it taller, and I want to make it wider. There we go. This whole area is going to be full of plump helmets. Ah, oh, there we go. It worked. Get down there and plant your mushrooms into the dirt. So that we may all eat them. Oh, resume. I think I paused. Yeah, I paused the game. They require an underground farm plot, which requires soil or muddy ground. They are the only plant food that can't be purchased. You embark on crap. All right. Uh, we need to find soil. Or, look. So I set up the farm plot. White sand. Oh. Uh, once you set up the farm plot, 
you do have to modify it. So that I actually don't remember how to do. You set what it's going to grow. Nothing, it may not be possible to grow the uh, mushrooms down there, though. Um, let's see. Okay, so here's a question. If we don't have muddy underground areas, how do we grow food? <laughs> um, also, our wagon. Carpenters. We build a bed, or tables, or a burial receptacle. Is that a tombstone? It's a tombstone, right? Siege engines, huh? A <laughs> gem window. I guess we need gems first. Attraction bench. Don't know what that means. Sounds like something that helps you if you like throw your back out. Oops. All right, let's let these dwarves do some stuff. I think they're still busy working. I don't think they've finished making the, uh... Oh, no, wait, they have made the carpenter's bench. Also... Bill. I do know that one thing we need is barrels. Let's see here. Wood barrels. Is that a thing in here? A bookcase. See, I get a very Minecrafty feel from all these options here. Oops. Okay. We're going to continue to let them do their thing. Um, no, you guys have not missed much. Basically, the world got generated, and we talked for five minutes about how Tiger games were terrible. Um, <laughs> it takes, like, five or ten minutes to actually uh, create a uh, dwarf fortress. Uh, uh, whatchamacallit level. Okay, so here's what we need to do. We need to figure out how to designate plump he helmets to grow. Sounds disgusting. How to designate plump helmets to grow in this farm plot. And if they can't even grow, if they can't be planted, we got to figure out how to get a different farm plot. Also, is, are th those quarters, is that, is that gold? Oh, those are apple. Those are roots. Apple tree roots. Oh, interesting. I thought that was gold. Um, okay, so here are our options. Uh, we got buildings, reports, designations. Maybe designations is how you control the farms. Make burrows, stockpile zones, set building tasks. Oh, we might have to. Uh, uh, we could do that to uh, um, tell our carpentry shop what to build. View rooms, view items, view units, hotkeys, status. Okay, so I think we can come here. Aha, okay, so we want plump helmets. And then we want in the summer to grow plump helmets. Oh, nope, 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 plump helmets. And then we want, let's see... Uh, in the winter to grow plump helmets and in the autumn we want to be growing plump helmets year round and then we could also F to fertilize that might allow the plump helmets to actually grow alright um, needs potash oh interesting so you know what you know what's interesting about this game is like it is heralded as one of the most complex games ever made. And I was very intimidated initially when I sat down to play this, which is why I wanted to do it live so I could get help, like the kind of help I've been getting. Um, but it's actually not as crazy difficult as it seems. Like once you start to get the hang of it, it's a little you can, you can sort of you 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 start to figure out the language that it uses, you know, to like uh, do things. Now I don't know if I'm doing a good job. That's a whole other story that I'm not even going to get into. But I can I at least kind of understand how to select buildings and units and stuff. Um, a menacing wood spit. That's interesting. 
I want a menacing altar. I want like an altar to Satan or something. Something that like uh, strikes fear in the hearts of all the other dwarves who look upon it. Um, okay, so the carpenter's workshop. Why don't you make... I said we needed barrels, right? Is there a wooden barrel somewhere? Wooden minecart, wheelbarrow, altar, pipe. Did I miss it? Oh, it's right at the top. It's a hotkey, in fact, because it's so important. And make a barrel. And then make... Uh, let's make uh, some chairs and beds. You know what? Let's finally indulge these dwarves with a couple of beds. We'll just make two. There's seven of them. They can figure it out. Um, we'll give them some chairs. Add new task. Chair. Add new task. Is there a table? There's a table. I said we wanted to make a bar, so we're working on that. Add table. And then we will add... So I know we want a bunch of barrels. Where was it again? Up here. Quick barrel. And R. There we go. We can set it to just repeat making barrels. All right. Done. Pause. How much in game time has passed? I have no idea. How do we tell? There we go. Has it been a day, a month, a year? Probably not a year. I think we're still in the same season that we started in, basically. Okay, while the dwarves are waiting on their uh, mushrooms, we're going to designate a little more mining here. All right, so this is, I want an epic bar. I want to make like the cheers of dwarf bars. So, wait, how come I can't do this? Oh wait, yes I can, I'm on mine. Here, to there. A good size bar. It's a, you know it's a starter bar. The bar is going to be, or I guess they call it a tavern, in uh, in uh, you know dwarf times, a tavern. Tavern, ale, mead, grog. You gotta know your medieval lingo, guys, if you want to live in a D and D style world. Just how it is. Um, now if we go up, see what's going on. Wait, are we? I keep confusing if I am paused or not. I'll be honest. <laughs> I like how the dwarves just live in a hole. There's just a hole in the ground, and that's where they go to do stuff. I don't know. What, are the, what does a dwarf even do? Hey, look, the leaves. Oh, my God, the leaves have changed color. That is so cool. Or am I imagining that? Um... That is neat. Okay. A uh, Hawkbird tree says, my dwarves would starve as I built things that don't progress the story. I mean, you know, starvation for these dwarves is a very real possibility. Like, dwarves under my care, they may not make it through the winter. You know what, if we die in the winter, I feel like that is still a success. It's it's a total failure, but it's, it's a success for our, our little gaming endeavor here. Um, okay, they're going to have a bar. We should make them a little bedroom area where they can all snuggle and keep warm. So we're going to... Let's see. Let's see here. Carve out a little hallway here. Like that. And then we will make... Uh, some barracks. We call them racks racks for the dwarves or like a little dormitory you know and they can all have fun okay, where are they are they working oh you know what we never did is we need to how did I do this again Q we need to actually add a task here Extract from plants. Brew drink from plants. There we go. And repeat. Alright, just start brewing booze, man. Meanwhile, we're still working on the tables. Oh, you, you know what? We have the we must have the beds and stuff. Once we uh, hollow out a bit of ground down here, we can actually place the um, 
tables and all sorts of stuff. Why do they leave the digging to one dwarf? Like no other dwarf can be bothered to help? Um, I think one other thing you can do is gather. So there's lots of berries and stuff out here. Why don't we gather a bunch of it? Um, so let's see here. Designation. Gather plants, baby. All right, who wants to go berry picking? Let me give you a huge swath of land. There you go. Gather all that. Gather berries as far as the horizon takes you. Yeah, sort of like multiplayer Minecraft, only with uh, with AI controlling it. I wonder if anyone has taken Minecraft and modded it into Dwarf Fortress, because you totally could. So again, so the history of Minecraft, if you're not familiar, um, what's the guy who made in My Minecraft? What's his name again? Like, uh, it starts with an N, Nash or something like that. Forget his name, but basically he was playing a lot of Dwarf Fortress and he wanted to make, I think, like a 3D version of it or something inspired by it. Um, and from uh, from his work came Minecraft. And you can definitely... Like, I'd never played Dwarf Fortress before today. I never looked anything up before I looked up some stuff uh, ahead of our video here today. I can clearly see the influences of Dwarf Fortress on Minecraft. It feels like a predecessor, 100% to Minecraft. Um, kind of interesting, actually. It's interesting because, like, Minecraft has become so big, and people are like, it's such a creative game, and this and this and this. I'm like, it totally is, and we shouldn't take anything away from the achievement that Minecraft is. It's like an amazing evolution of games, but it is, you know, kind of a, a game that... Uh, Hey, what is happening over here? Why did they not dig out the bar? Um, it is a game that, you know, has some influences. And do we want to call that homage or theft? Um, I prefer homage. Because um, I don't think any idea is you know, completely, uh, uh, whatchamacallit, completely belongs to anybody. But, I mean, it's definitely, it, it's, I think it's cool we could say that a game like uh, Dwarf Fortress um, inspired uh, something that was as insane and as big as Minecraft. So we might have to chop down these uh, logs, these roots. No, they seem to be clearing them out. Man, what a cool bar. Imagine that you went into a hole, walked down a hall, and then there was a bar with like tree roots all around you. Like, I don't know. Actually, it sounds kind of weird less cool but just imagine it looking cool that's what i'm thinking of here um jay have you uh, reviewed sub uh, terrania on sega mega drive yet yes i think i did actually i think i did that's the one where it's like a top-down shooter and you have to explore mines and stuff with the uh, spacecraft or whatever right if so then yes i'm pretty sure i have uh i have played it um and then i will follow up by asking you um, uh, why? Is it a favorite of yours? Um, and if so, there's a video you can check out, but, uh, you know, it was a game I'd never heard of before, so keep that in mind when you do watch it. <laughs> Alright, our bar is coming along nicely. There we go, they finally dug out the hole. Alright, we've got a bar. Time to place some buildings. For instance, let's place some beds over in our bedroom area. This is our bedroom area, right? We'll do a bed there. Um, we have a sand pear wood bed. Knock yourself out there. We'll place another bed here. The apple wood bed. Now we will place uh, a s seats. So we have a chair or a throne. All right, let's start <laughs> a throne. Imagine a bar where you have a throne. That's awesome. Start setting up some tables here. Applewood chair. And another one here so the dwarves can socialize. You know, we need more chairs. And we need a table. Oh, wait, that is not what we want. A uh, table right here. And... 
another one here. And another one here. We're gonna create like a long table. We'll, we need some more chairs. We'll create like a whole row of chairs. So we're sim sitting it up, guys. Sim sitting it up. Um, now I believe you can also designate. Let's see, designations. Um, B. Reclaim items, forbid items, melt items, remove items. There's a way to sort of set rooms up. So, oops. Uh, let's see. Building. Could it be under building? No, that's like actually build a building. Um, let's see. Civilizations, designations, set order, jobless squad. Oh, there's also military and squads. I saw briefly how to make that happen. So, what is W? What is make burrows? I don't even know what that means. The dwarves just burrow themselves inside. Oh, zones. Here we go. All right. I'm going to set up this whole thing as a meeting area. M. Okay, and L to assign location. You have not designated any locations. Do it here. Add location. Uh, this is an inn or tavern. The brunch of constructing. Okay. Now we can designate another zone over here. This is Sleepy Time Hall. We'll start here and go here. And we want... Hey, can make hospitals? That's interesting. Uh, so let's see. What would, where would a bedroom be? Water source, fishing, gathering fruit, garbage dump, pen or pasture, a pit or pond, sand, clay, meeting area. Uh, a meeting area, I guess. Uh, no, it wouldn't be that. Wait. What... Where would sleeping count? Or maybe you don't even need to designate the uh, uh, the sleeping areas. So it wouldn't be a water source. This is like a multiple choice question. Which of these options is closest to a bedroom in medieval parlay? Uh, nothing. Okay. I'm just gonna hope the dwarves are smart enough to sleep in that room. So we got the bar over here, a farm, a bedroom. Things are going well. Let's see, are my doors actually doing stuff? They are, all right. Guys, I gotta grab a beer and take a quick break because we are about an hour into this. Um, so chat amongst yourselves. Enjoy the sweet dwarven music. Don't say anything bad about me because I'll read it in the chat when I get back. And uh, if you want to take a quick break too, this is just like a commercial break, all right? I'll be right back, guys. All right, guys. I'm back, and I brought two beers with me so I wouldn't have to get up again. Ah. All right, so this has been very casual so far. Just sort of laid back watching these dwarves do their thing. Um, and we're going to keep going here, but I thought it'd be fun since this is our 700th episode to kind of like throw out some questions and do a bit of like meta commentary on the thousand one while we watch the dwarves live their lives. Hey, look, I think they're sleeping in the beds and stuff or wait, what is that? Hold on. A stray one humped camel is in my bedroom. Also a stray dog that has been tamed somehow, but also a stray. Uh, did you bring beer for the rest of the class? Yo, if you guys uh, were here, I would totally offer you a beer. But there's nothing I can do over... You know, YouTube isn't that advanced yet. Uh, where I can just distribute beer to you remotely. That would be something, though, right? Maybe I could door dash you some beer or something. Um, also, nobody tell YouTube I'm drinking. Apparently, like, if you drink or do drugs on streams, they, like, shut you down or something. So, I've had two beers. Keep it between us, guys. Um, anyway, I'm going to unpause this. 
Um, the dwarves are living their life, which is pretty cool. Um, so anyway, um, yeah, I, I just kind of wanted, since we're here, since we're doing a live stream, we don't do tons of these, and it's a chance to talk to you guys directly. And uh, I thought it'd be fun just to, to hear from you guys if there was, uh, you know, you've been watching this channel for like seven years, give or take, depending on when you found it. Um, I'm sure there's games that I have yet to check out. And I was just wondering if there's any games that you guys have been like waiting for me to play that you know were in the book or things that you're hoping I'll play like on the weekend that are out of the book or maybe a game you don't even know if it's in the book or not. You're just hoping I'll play it. Um, are there any games that you guys sort of have out that uh, you think would be fun or funny or cool to see me play? So there's a question for you, class. Um, you go ahead and think about it for a minute. Um, also, you know, if there's anything you guys want to ask me, uh, feel free to throw that in the comments as well. We can do sort of a, an, in, an informal AMA um, as part of the 700th. Um, where's that guy going? Hey. Oh, they're still piling the wood. You diligent dwarves, you. Okay, so um, I'm going to while I'm waiting for your questions, if you even got, if you guys even have any questions that you actually want to post, we'll um, let's see, cancel the task, new task. We're gonna start making uh, beds, and we will make chairs. Make chairs for a little while, okay. and go for it, dwarves. <laughs> <laughs> RCR 1020 the fort's going well man the fort is going well I think there are some like what wait what are those like wild turkeys or something out here splattering of dog dog of dog blood dog blood what is all this there's dog blood all over the field dog and badger blood oh that's cool so it's like when animals fight like leaves blood trails that is kind of sick actually um oh hey um <laughs> how's it going cpg uh uh cgp rob yes <laughs> sorry i've had a couple beers i'm i'm trying to live i'm trying to actually role play life as a dwarf here and dwarves drink beer from what i've heard so that's what i'm doing so um, Rob, thank you for coming, man. Nice to see you here. Uh, for those of you guys who don't know, CGP Rob uh, runs the Classic Gaming Podcast, which I have uh, frequently been a guest over over the years, just sort of here and there, and uh, always a great time. And I think just like two weeks ago or something, I was on. Um, it was very recent. Um, so there's a, there's a very recent episode you can check out. I think it was me and uh, Alex, uh, the SNES drunk, joined um joined rob for an episode where i think jay couldn't make it if any of these details are wrong it's because i was uh, probably drunk then too but uh but yeah anyway um so some folks are saying games that they're looking forward to me trying or hoping i try include uh rocket night adventures I even know what that one is. I don't think I do. You can elaborate on what kind of game that is. Uh, for some reason, I, it brought to mind Shovel Knight, but I know it's a different game. Uh, Turrican 2. I think I played the first Turrican. That's the one where it's sort of like Contra, but you're a robot. Um, if so, I did like that game. And I would... Pl oh, maybe I played Super Turrican. Maybe that's it. Um, Wiz and Liz, never heard of that, but that sounds like a ZX Spectrum or Commodore 64 game to me. So maybe I'm right, maybe I'm wrong. Um, I have not looked at Gunners Evan yet either, by the way. Um, I don't think I have done Final Fantasy 1. Um, I know, so I... Hey, look, there's a guy making music over here. You go, man. He's just there singing. This guy's cheering him on. Like a let's... He's doing a Let's Sing, the ancient form of Let's Plays. Don't ask me to sing, though. It's atrocious, and nobody would benefit from that. Um, Final Fantasy 1. So uh, I, I do plan out the games that I'm going to be playing well in advance. I have a video on my Patreon showing it. 
and I'm pretty sure I have a Final Fantasy game coming up. So in the in the next few videos, uh, we have some fun ones coming up. In the next video, 701 to ring in year eight. Uh, actually, my friend Jordan uh, joined me again. Um, and I won't spoil exactly what the game is about, but I will say it is a classic and we had a lot of fun. So that video should be coming out on Monday, Tuesday, if I'm really late uh, editing it, but probably Monday. Um, and then, yeah, there's a couple other games coming out. Uh, and I'm pretty sure Final Fantasy is in the list. So you'll see a Final Fantasy game in the next two weeks or so at some point, probably. I don't know if it's Final Fantasy 1. I, I want to say no, but it could be. Um, now, was Final Fantasy 1 the one that was only released in Japan? Because I know they released a couple Final Fantasies before they bothered to release any in North America. Because they didn't think North Americans could handle Final Fantasy. Um, so, you know, I'm not even doing anything in the game anymore. I'm just sitting drinking beer talking to you guys here. Let's uh, play some seats. Pretty sure I have some. We'll enhance this bar. Seat, placement, here, there, seat, placement, there. I will come back to your comments and just, I feel like I should do something. <laughs> something game related. Uh, no. Placement. There. You know what? Since that guy keeps singing in the corner, why don't we put some seats over here for people to enjoy his uh, awesome tunes? You know, I don't, I don't judge my dwarves. If they want to live this musical lifestyle, I say go for it, dudes. You be musical. Um, all right. And I want to zoom back out and have my dude start making a uh, table. Get out of this queue. Okay, so cancel task, add new task, tables, repeat. All right. I don't know how you get more dwarves. I think they have to like migrate in or maybe your dwarves, you know, come spring, little dwarflings start showing up, if you know what I mean. Wink, wink. But uh, so far, I'm pretty sure we just have the same number of dwarves that we've always had. They're just sleeping in their beds. Oh, and I think we can also place a bed. Let's just do that. So they're not all sleeping on top of each other. Maybe we do want them sleeping on top of each other. Maybe that's the key to making more dwarflings. Um, anyway, we'll let them continue doing their thing here. Um, go dwarfs. Watch the bar. Um, okay, Final Fantasy 1. Um, maybe coming up. Project Zomboid. Cry Fear. Parasite Eve. I want to say that one is in the book. I mean, it should be. It's iconic enough. Project Zomboid. I don't know if Project Zomboid or Cry Fear are in the book or not. Um, uh, oh, Rob. Uh, dig deep. That's where the good metal is. Maybe that should be our next task, actually. Uh, two, three, and five didn't come out in the U.S. Okay, so one and four did. And if I'm recalling correctly, they labeled Final Fantasy IV, Final Fantasy II in North America because they didn't want to confuse North Americans as to why it was one, then four. Um, yeah. The only Final Fantasy I ever played as a kid, I got uh, for my Game Boy. I used to, on weekends, go to the flea market with my mom, and uh, there was a guy there that would sell Game Boy games, and you could trade in Game Boy games and buy new ones. So I would you know, pay 20 bucks for a Game Boy game, play it for a week, and then if I didn't like it the next week, or not even if I didn't like it, if I beat it, or, you know, if there's another game I wanted, I'd take the game back, and I'd sell it back to him for, like, 10 bucks, and then buy another one for 20. So it's kind of like renting a game semi-indefinitely. It was kind of cool, actually. I miss doing stuff like that, but um, that that's how I uh, discovered my Game Boy games as a kid. And I'm pretty sure I had Final Fantasy whatever was on the Game Boy. I, I want to say three, but it could could have been whatever. Um, but uh, I'm pretty sure I had a Final Fantasy game on Game Boy. Uh, what just happened? Some migrants have arrived. Oh my god. Um, yeah, I had Final Fantasy on Game Boy briefly. Um, Alright. Hey, look at this. A couple of migrants. Look at them all coming in. Welcome to the party. This means we're, we're being semi-successful. That's cool. And they labeled Final Fantasy 6 as 3. Yeah, just... 
It's funny that the things they thought wouldn't fly in North America. They're like, North Americans don't like role-playing games. Like they, hey, you, did you ever hear Dungeons and Dragons? Literally, church groups were so upset by the amount of RPGing that was happening in the 80s that they were like trying to like uh, ruin people's lives. They thought Satan was taking over the youth. Like, what do you mean North Americans don't like RPGs? We love them. Back didn't. I don't. It, it's a North American invention, right? Gary Gygax, the D and D guy, he created the first true RPG, which is D and D. So, yeah, kind of weird idea from the Japanese that we wouldn't be interested. Anyway, let's start digging. Enough blathering on. It's time to dig. Um. All right. We're going to dig a big hallway here, and then once we dig out this hallway, we'll dig deeper. We're going to dig as deep as we can get here. Um, Game Boy, Final Fantasy weren't actually Final Fantasy. They were another series that put the Final Fantasy on the title to help. Oh, interesting. Okay. Um, so, yeah, wh whatever it was on the Game Boy that was called Final Fantasy, that's what I played. Rocket Knight is a side-scrolling platformer starring Possum. Interesting. Oh, is Rocket Knight, does it have like a Possum who's in, uh, yeah, like in armor, like Rocket Knight. I think I know what game you're talking about now, dude. Um, I haven't played it, I don't think, but I'm pretty sure I know what you're talking about now. Um, okay. We need to channel, I think? Um, it was Hawkbird Tree who told me how to do this, so if I'm doing it wrong, dude, just, just shout at me in the comments, but I'm gonna try and channel down, and we'll see if this works. Okay, now if I go down deeper, oh yeah, alright, should we, so now here, I'm gonna dig out a big area here. See what we got going on. How deep can you go in this game? I'd be curious to know exactly how deep you can actually get. Also, what's the adventure mode like in this? I hear it's basically sort of like rogue. Um, where you, like, explore dungeons and castles and stuff, and, um, I don't know if it's considered good or not. I assume it's considered good, but, uh, dig too deep and fun stuff happens. Well, that sounds like a challenge, sir. That sounds like a challenge. I hope this guy doesn't dig himself into a hole that he can't get out of. Seems like he's digging away all the off the ramps that go up, <laughs> which could be a problem. Can the dwarves dig themselves into a hole? Oh, there's literally one ramp left. You lucky bastard. Carving up big squares is fine if you want to do that, but it's very inefficient. What I do is every 10 levels, I like a simple cross-shaped dig pattern and then move deeper. Makes sense. Truthfully, I don't know what I'm doing, but I just wanted him to dig out a big hole. But we had like a landing spot, I guess. But yeah, this is taking a while. Um, if they get stuck in holes, can you just add stairs? Is that how you get them out? Is that possible? Or are they just stuck? Because I, I think this guy might be stuck. Taking forever to dig. They look, they're sleeping in the beds. Um, oh, we can also uh, expand the. Uh, we can expand the bar now. Add some tables over here. Table. There. Table. There. some more chairs. You know why the migrants are going to come here? It's for the bar. 
bar, man. That's where it's at. That's where you bring in tourist dollars. Mead and singing. There we go. Look at that. Look at that awesome bar. Awesome pub. Oh, we need a, another table right here. Chair. Here. Chair. Right, there's a camel in the way of the other chair I wanted to place. Anyway, there we go. Awesome bar. Dudes are singing. Merriness is happening. You know, we haven't dealt with food at all. We've really been focused on just booze. So I hope these dwarves don't starve. Alright, maybe we should just issue a series of digging orders. Channel. Dig your way down, boy. Oops. Down he goes. Did he fall asleep? Is he just snoozing on the job? Or is it paused? Can't tell. One thing I find a little confusing about this is how to tell if it's paused or not. I guess when it says press space to pause, that means it's not paused. But it says pause on the screen, so it makes me think the game is paused. I wish just at the top it said paused or not. That's, that's all I wish. Because otherwise, it's just, uh, you know, not 100% obvious. Um, alright. Let's dig out a little area here. This, and then he will, uh, continue to channel his way down. I think I totally did get him stuck by, uh... Hey, where'd he go? Oh, I came back. I think I totally did get him stuck. This hole. I don't know if he can get out. Let's just watch him for a second. I'm curious if he will get out. <laughs> or if he is screwed. Okay. Can he go home? Doesn't look like it. Okay, hold on. Let's build some stairs. How do we do this? Designate. Build a ramp. There. I wonder if the guy who's in the hole is the only guy who can, like, actually make a ramp. Alright, well, if anyone knows how to get this guy out of the hole, let me know. But otherwise, we're just going to keep on digging. Channel... Go for it, dude. Dig! Alright. Designate mine. Can you make the can you make it unstable where like the cave collapses if you like dig too much? Yeah, Rob, you're you're right, man. Digging these smaller things is way smarter. It goes so much faster. You should be able to build an upward stair with the guy stuck and have someone build a downward stair right on top, maybe. Okay. I'll give that a shot. Because I, I, I don't want to get my dwarf stuck. It is, it is kind of a cruel fate for this guy. He's been so loyal to us. Um... So I think it's just designate. Uh, what? Downstairs. Here. Here. There we go. Okay, let's just see if that helps anything. an upstairs. Oh, 
that. Oh no, I don't know how to give them upstairs. Let's do up downstairs. It makes the stairs go up and down. Okay, whoops. Try this downstairs. Uh, this. This. Huh. There can only be one tile. Oh, I don't know how to designate it. Alright, well, whatever. He's trapped for now. The fool. Hey, what are these now? Rough hewn siltstone walls. He's just digging his way to freedom, guys. Don't worry about him. He'll be fine. Don't worry about building stairs. This guy's... He's doing okay. He's doing dwarf things. Could not find a path. Interesting. What is this stuff? Oops. Okay. Siltstone walls. Tetradite walls. Onyx Silkstone. Interesting. All right. Well, you know what we can do is uh, dig deeper. Oops, don't want to do that. Uh, oh, how do you clear? Ah, whatever. I'm sure it'll be fine. Did I cover sin and punishment on the N64? Hmm. I don't think I have, actually. Um, what is that one like? Oh, something happened by a badger boar. Somebody might have been killed. You've struck Tetradite. Does that mean I can't go any further? It has started raining. Uh, we might have reached the bottom of the mine. Where'd my guy go? He's trying to leave. <laughs> You will never see the surface again. You are now a bottom dweller. Athel Dashon has created a masterpiece apple wood table. Are they still making tables? I forgot to tell them to stop. Guess I'll just do it forever unless, uh, unless you stop them. A Q. Uh, you guys can stop making tables. Can we sell these things? I think they made like a thousand tables. Um, all right. I think, you know, well, there's blood all over the field. What have you guys been doing out here? What is all this stuff? Hold on, what, what are all these bees? Okay, what, what are all these things? A boar, a boar, a boar. A bunch of boars have come out here. There's dense hair grass. There's... I assume this is blood or something. Alright, it is time. I think. What is all the red? Oh, is it rain? I don't know what's happening. I'm being attacked by boars, guys. Time to militarize. And, uh... Send our dwarves to die. I think that's a suitable way to wrap up. Uh, it's, it's a suitable way to enter year eight and a suitable ending for our little uh little dwarven village here so we need to create a squad now we don't have any equipment so i'm gonna tell them to use metal armor but truthfully they're gonna go out just you know uh completely unarmed um and now i want to add people to the squad so how do i do this <laughs> 
Um, let's see. Ah, here we go. Candidates. Um, well, I think this guy's the miner, and I don't think he's coming back, but we'll set up, uh, do some moral kill as our leader. And then the jeweler will be... We have a stoneworker, a jeweler, a carpenter, a fish cleaner, a planter, an expedition leader. Nah, he, you know what? The leaders never do get their hands dirty. They stay back. Of a clothier, a woodcutter, a bone carver. Oh, man, that guy's going to be good at combat. Metalsmith and an animal care caretaker. Blacksmith has to stay back and presumably make weapons, but that ain't happening. Um, all right. Done. I think our squad is ready for combat. The Golden Confidence. And we are going to attack. And we are going to attack whatever the hell is down here, man. Uh, wait. Attack this. Okay, wait, that doesn't work. Um, we can squad. We can move. I think. That doesn't work either. Select individuals. Uh, A choose squad. Okay, there we go. We got our squad. Now we can have them do something. Wait, where did my squad go? Uh, choose this squad. And center on this squad. Okay, they're all sleeping or something. And I move them. Cannot get them to move. Active, you schedule, center on squad. <laughs> uh, how do you actually get your squad to obey your orders? A thief has stolen a large stepladder. Wait, I didn't even know we had it. Wait, that stepladder could have gotten that guy out of the hole. Are you kidding? We had a stepladder this whole time? Damn it. <laughs> okay. What is this thing? There's all sorts of stuff happening out in the fields. I feel like we've been attacked by dogs. There's blood everywhere. And I, I, I added a bunch of people to a military squad and they won't even listen to my commands. Oh no. All right, well, <laughs> I hope this isn't indicative of how year eight's gonna go. Although it is kind of a hilarious way to end. A, a, a military that won't engage, dogs killing everyone, a guy stuck in a hole, and a kick-ass bar. Um, success? I think today was a success with Dwarf Fortress, question mark? Um, guys, what do you think of Dwarf Fortress here? Is it a game you must play before you die? I mean, I think the legend of Dwarf Fortress. I heard about Dwarf Fortress years before I even... Years before today. I was going to say before I even sat down to play, but th that's today. Today, it's happening right now. It's the first time I've ever played this. I heard of it for years. I knew about it. I didn't know much about it other than it was the inspiration for Minecraft. But having, you know, looked up a little bit before today, the fact it's been development for like 20 years and they're trying to make like uh, this, you know, crazy world simulator and it has an adventure mode. I mean, honestly, if I had had this as a kid, I would have gotten lost in this world 100%. I played games that had this kind of graphics all the time and I love them. And if you had a game where you could create an entire world and explore it. I mean, I have scratched the surface, not even the surface. I've, I've, I've scratched like the polyurethane covering the surface paint. I haven't even got to the paint yet. There's so much here to explore in Dwarf Fortress. It is so cool, it is so elaborate. It is procedurally generated, which is so cool, meaning every time you play, you can get a different world. There's different histories. There's, you know, you can not only build these little villages, um, but you can go to war, which, again, we can't figure out. That's okay. You know what? Our guys are kind of pacifists. There's blood dog all over the field. There's dog blood all over the fields. Um, but our guys still don't want to fight. So I don't know what their deal is, but that's okay. Uh, we're not going to force them into a war. But yeah, I think this is a super cool game. I think the just the enormity of what this game is um, does make it iconic enough that I think if you haven't tried it, you should... You know, take a page out of my book and give it a shot. 
Um, it is considered one of the hardest games of all time, but hopefully my, you know, fumbled attempts at playing um, has given you some idea of uh, how to get started. Um, and it's a really interesting game because, I mean, a lot of people don't even consider it a game. It's considered like a, a video experience and it's in like art museums and stuff like it is. It is a really cool thing that that uh, uh, has been created here. Uh, this game is a good resource for writers. Yeah, I bet. I, I know things we haven't even delved into is that every character, every dwarf is like a backstory and stuff in this. Like, this is such a detailed um, game. Looks like watching paint dry. It not for me. Totally fair, Blitzwing. <laughs> you know, uh, that's fair. That's totally fair. You know, not every game is going to be for everyone. Uh, I, I like the complexity of it, uh, but I totally get... How some people could look at this and be like, it is way too slow for me, dog. Um, before we do wrap up, though, something just came up on the screen here. I'm your liaison to the mountain homes. Let's discuss your situation. There's much to share. Um, okay. Finish peeking in on conversation. Uh, what requests do you have for the merchants? Oh, you can actually request things. Oh, this is cool. I, I don't know what we're going to request. We're just going to say done. Remember, trade agreement strengthen bonds. Consider an import agreement next year. Oh, that's cool. So you can even set up like trade alliances uh, and stuff. That's very cool. Um, yeah, I mean, as a kid, I loved games that had seemingly had no boundary, that you could just keep doing stuff on the horizon. Like, I wonder if I could like create a bar or go to a different town or like attack people. So it's like, I really liked that kind of stuff. But um, anyway, anyway, guys, you know what I think? What do you think? Um, let me know in the comments down below, because by the time you watch this video, it's not going to be a live stream anymore. Uh, you missed the live stream if you're watching this, but that's OK. We'll do more in future. Um, to all you fine folks who actually did join the live stream tonight, thanks! Um, I enjoy, as always, uh, having your live commentary to keep me company. I have long said I want to start doing more live streams, and at some point that will actually happen more reliably. Um, but, uh, you know, for right now, um, probably it's going to stay, our, our format's going to stay primarily with videos. Uh, but there will be the occasional live stream sprinkled through year eight guys we have a lot of good games scheduled for year eight there is a final fantasy game coming up there is a, a, a fun game coming up next with jordan um, there's many other games on the horizon so do turn tune back in soon um, but thanks to everyone for the congratulations and you guys all take care of yourselves and we will see you again very soon all right, everybody. Oh, wait, I have I have a, a, a thanks for watching screen. Here we go. You guys ready? Boom. Thanks for watching. All right, guys, it was a blast. Thanks for keeping me company. We will see you. See you soon. All right, guys. Peace.